I'm joined now by Jennifer Strauss. She's the external relations officer at the Berkeley Seismological Laboratory. Uh, Jennifer, thanks for joining us. What are the biggest concerns with an earthquake of this magnitude strikes? Was this the big one or is there something more to come? Well, this is definitely the biggest earthquake we've seen in the sequence so far. This has been a sequence of strike slip faults in the same area of the fault zone, so the magnitude 6, 6.2 that we've seen before. Um, this is sort of the culmination of that so far. Um, we can't rule out that there's not going to be another large earthquake, but um, the progression that goes so far does sort of indicate that this would be the main shock, and we can expect a series of aftershocks to follow. Is there a big difference between uh, the 6.5 that happened on Thursday and the more recent 7.0 magnitude earthquake? Uh, is it safe to say that these two are related? Yes, they seem to be related because they're happening on the same fault zone. The same basic portion of the fault is ripping. Um, this one seems to have been more spread out in terms of impact area, and it's also shaking ground that was already unstable from the previous two events and buildings that were already unstable. So that's why you see sort of this widespread destruction again today. You know, as we know, Japan is no stranger to earthquakes. It's located in the Ring of Fire. You mentioned uh, the fault zone that it lies on. Do you know or can you tell us what led to or caused these specific earthquakes? So this particular area of Japan is a intersection of three plates. So you have the Sunda plate that's diving down below the Philippine plate, which is diving down with the Eurasia plate. And so it's sort of at the nexus of where all these three plates are happening. So this is not a surprising earthquake to be happening in this area, but it's very different from the subduction zone earthquakes like the giant one that we saw in 2011. What areas of the world are you watching right now? Is there any particular region that uh, appears to be more active than, than others? Um, always the ring of fire is the sort of locus that we focus on for earthquake studies. That's the most active portion of the entire world. Um, but other areas are seeing lots of earthquakes as well. So we just try to keep a global outlook on things that are happening. And, you know, we are seeing them, as you mentioned, uh, especially in, in South America. Um, is there a way to predict an earthquake is going to happen? Not right now, we can't predict an earthquake, but what we can do is forecast that an earthquake has happened and that shaking is coming people's way. So for example, the earthquake early warning system in Japan has sent out alerts for all of these large events that have happened in the past week. And so people have been able to take shelter and um, trains and businesses have been able to implement automated controls. Um, there's systems like that around the world. We're working on one here in California and the west coast of the United States as well. All right, Jennifer Strauss in California, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it.